It just comes off as delusional and disrespectful. Sure friends and you're not familiar with. Pressure them. Like your favorite dream SMP YouTuber. Do not interact if person. you're mentally stable. So, <laughs> okay. If here's the thing. I, okay, so I'm not like. There's this content creator called Spockte, who I, I, I've looked up to for, for, for a good while now. Um, I find his content interesting, uh, especially uh, d the uh, psy psychological-oriented uh, uh, slant he's been taking recently. You know, it's great to see a neurodivergent creator thrive, right, and, and, and all that little stuff. Um, and, you know, for as a fellow ADHD person, it, it's, it, it feels nice to see a similar like-minded individual with um, a, a kind of uh, similar speech patterns. <laughs> I mean, look, if, if you pick on it, you pick, if you pick up on it, you pick up on it. If you don't, that's okay. But either way, he's a very interesting individual with some very interesting ideas. However, recently there was a video that he made, which was it was consistent in his typical quality in terms of editing, uh, s script organization, um, and uh, general, yeah, just general things. It was, it, it, was, it was of high quality, right? However, what wasn't high quality was his knowledge on the subject matter. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't know anything about it, okay? You know, like, I, he could have read hours and hours worth of, um, of papers written on the matter of dissociative disorders. However, it really doesn't come across in the video. Look, look, God bless him. I don't, I don't, I, I don't dislike this individual. However, the things that he said uh, did... Uh, bring out an emotional response within me so much so that if I don't make a video responding to it I think I will melt into a, a puddle. So if you don't know um, I am a, a certain someone with a DID um, Dissociative Identity Disorder um, or Dissociative dis Disorders in general um, are Okay, let me just talk about DID specifically. So, dissociative identity disorder refers to um, a disorder in which the person who has it um, underwent uh, repetitive childhood trauma, um, and because of that, there were amnesic barriers put up to separate individual identities and s states of consciousness, uh, alternate states of consciousness, short for alters, which is what people usually refer to the different system members within a system. You get it? So, so someone can have anywhere from uh, the minimum, which is two altered states of consciousness, to upwards of hundreds. The amount of system members someone will have is highly dependent on the person, uh, as well as the overall system experience of each individual. Y you know, that's why um, there is so, so much misinformation when it comes to DID specifically. It's because only recently has it become less and less stigmatized. A part of the destigmatization, I would say, started with um, a certain video that a very notable content creator made uh, uh, named Anthony Padilla, which you may have known him from his uh, writing work on Smosh back in the day, but now he, he has made a video, uh, a, a couple Couple years ago, he made a video interviewing different uh, people with DID, um, which has gained a lot of traction, and I want to say almost kickstarted a whole new wave of uh, understanding when it comes to DID and interest in DID, as well as a whole new wave of people claiming that they have DID. I'm not going to say that those people are wrong in saying that they have it. I'm saying that I have it, right? And, but it's not just an educated guess for the average person, uh, especially for the people who are claiming that they have it. Because, okay, so here's the thing. If you haven't noticed, with the, uh, the age of the internet, there have been uh, different phases in which different um, disorders gain traction and understanding uh, and waves of people claiming that they have it right it happened with depression in around 2017 there there was there were a lot of people uh, specifically on tumblr.com uh, who claimed that they had depressed depressive disorder um which 
I mean, I was one of them, and it turned out that I did have it, right? Um, and a lot of people were claiming, oh, the people who are claiming that they have depression are just doing it to, to be cool and whatnot. But as far as I've noticed, everyone who claims to have depression or claimed at that point did turn out to actually have a depressive disorder. And then afterwards, it was it started with um, with gender dysphoria, right? Um, where a lot of people were claiming that they were transgender, uh, which turned out, yeah, they are. Huh. But there was also a wave of people saying, oh, they're just they're just they're just they're trans trenders. They're just getting in on it, you know, hopping on the bandwagon or whatever. But um, the year where trans trenders were very popular was also when I realized I was transgender. And look at look at where we are now. Ha still haven't gone back. Makes you think, right? Um, and after that was autism spectrum disorder, where oh, people are claiming to be autistic just because just for like the minority points. Um, that's also around the time where I realized I was autistic. And here we are. <laughs> and then afterwards, people were claiming, oh, you know, ADHD. People are claiming to have ADHD just for, you know, minority points or whatever the hell. Um, that's around the time I got diagnosed with ADHD. Um, not intentionally, by the way. Okay, something that's important here to, 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 to take from all this. For us to really have this discussion at all, we need to operate under the pretense that they are not intentionally faking it. Okay? Which can be difficult to, to 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 navigate with just because some of the people who when they are on for instance TikTok and making uh, TikToks about um, their dissociative disorders demonstrating uh, the different alters within their system um, a lot of the times they will play up uh, and this is just an assumption on my end okay a lot of the times they will play up some of the characteristics of DID for the camera. And do you know why that is? People will play up their disorders so that they make the viewer actually believe them when they say that. Not because they want to, um, f they want to lie to you, but because they actually do have this disorder, but they're afraid if the symptoms are too subtle that you're not going to believe them. <laughs> So, and and that that might sound a little hard to believe because like well if if the symptoms are are more exaggerated then aren't they less believable? It depends, but a lot of the times if somebody is uh, making any sort of media surrounding their disorders, they're kind of in a double bind in terms of what they can do to make you actually believe them. Because I don't know if you know, but. Whenever somebody talks about a disorder that they have, for some reason, it invites a lot of people around them to just decide to speculate on if the person really struggles with this day-to-day -day condition or not. Which is not okay, especially because that does a lot of harm, despite what people might think. But, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start going through the video because there are a lot of different claims that this guy makes, Spockter. God bless him, God bless him. Okay, look, I, I, I don't hate the guy. All right. I hope that he doesn't make a video like this again, where he speculates on whether or not people have a disorder, or at least implies that he is spec or implies that people are not act are, are faking a disorder uh, that is very real, <laughs> and also doing real harm to the reputation of people who claim to have DID. Right? Because, because here's the thing: speculating on if someone is faking DID specifically or not is a hot button. Uh, topic to to engage in, right? One of the biggest influencers within the DID community, a dissoci dissociated, right, um, is a system who the origins of which are always like if you search their name on YouTube, then you'll get like dissociated it, it was caught lying. Oh, they don't actually have it. Oh, and the evidence of which I don't know if you know is incredibly flimsy <laughs> and just it's just such a nothing burger that it just makes you think why the hell are you doing this it doesn't matter if somebody is faking it as long as they aren't making the reputation of DID look bad but that nobody has the power to do that you are giving them the power to do that by putting on them on, on such a pedestal okay because like in the case of dissociated specifically all right I've watched their content and they don't demonize DID in any way. In fact, if anything, they work against it. And 
uh, it will work against de demonizing it and kind of normalize it and actually spread a lot of genuinely interesting and good and accurate information on the matter. So if they're faking it, they're doing a really good job and they're also uh, basically making content that uh, not only appeals to people with DID because it, you know, portrays their struggles, but also could help um, educate positively um, people who don't have DID. Or as Sparta refers to them, mentally, mentally stable, stable people. <sighs> so I, I guess this video is being presented to you by a mentally unstable person. So take that with, with take, take that how you will. Also, is it like interesting to anyone else that anyone with DID who is trying to counteract stigma is usually emphasizing how it's how DID is not as uncommon as people portray it to be. However, people who spread misinformation on the matter tend to claim that it's more rare than it tends to be. Therefore, people should be believed less when they claim to have it. Do with that information what you will. I think it's very telling, but keep, just keep, keep that in the back of your mind um, as we go through the video, okay? All right. And also, if I get, look, if I get heated during this, it's because I'm passionate, not because I hate the guy, all right? Spockter, God bless his soul. He made, he just made a bad video. He just made a really bad video. No, it's fine. It's not really bad. It is, it's pretty bad. Okay, I just say it's bad because it's just horrible misinformation that he spreads. And I, whenever I watch it, there's a sense of boiling frustration that just <laughs> bubbles up. So, God bless him. Love the guy, all right? I, lo I love him, I love him, love him. Okay, anyway, anyway, let's go. Let's go, let's go. So riddle me this, if DID and other dissociative disorders are a result of trauma, I, I, I really, really am curious what trauma corpse husband or Wilbur suit and angel dust have. Because genuinely, if splits are a result of trauma and the personalities that derive from them typically reflect a source of how and when that trauma occurred, how did you split into angel dust? How did you split into Wilbur's suit? H how would somebody split into corpse husband? Okay. And so I don't know about the other ones that he described, um, but let me give let me enlighten you a little bit on the rationale that someone might have for splitting into let's say in this case a corpse husband okay what's something about this political uh, political what's something about this public figure that is very well known well the fact that he is antisocial um the fact that he is very reclusive has a lot of a lot of uh, social anxiety um and is very when it comes to his content, a lot of people like him for his very deep voice, and a lot of people find that comforting and soothing, right? So not only is this a, a public figure who, who whose presence is soothing, but he also has a lot of social anxiety, which people can, you know, uh, sort of uh, express some sort of alignment with, you know, relate to this guy, um, but see him in a way that is still respectable. So this is a respectable public figure that people find comfort in, okay? So sure, maybe that doesn't reflect the actual trauma that is going on when this person needed to, to, split, to split into him, but I mean, I mean, not all of them have to ref have to actually reflect the trauma. A lot of them are just like a, a lot of altered states of consciousness are not just directly an abuser. A lot of them aren't directly like metaphors for the actual trauma. You know, a lot of them just serve a constructive purpose and some of them don't. Some of them don't. Okay. Some of them, uh, maybe, um, maybe the host needs uh, a source of confidence, right? And so a, a very confident, very outgoing altar is formed because that is a necessity in that moment, right? Who's a, who's a confident public figure, you know? May, uh, maybe this person uh, has, like, hyper fixates on a specific form of media, right? That causes them to um, feel comfort in it and feel like, man, if only I was this public figure, 
then maybe I would be able to do this. Maybe I would be safer. Maybe I would have, you know, uh, more of a, I, I, I don't know, more social power or whatever. You know, what, whatever is it that this public figure has that this person doesn't have, you know? There, that, that kind of longing, that kind of maybe even jealousy in some forms can cause an altered to split. And yeah, that doesn't reflect the actual trauma that is going on with this person, but it doesn't need to for it to actually happen. I mean, what do you want from them? What? Do all uh, altered states of consciousness have to be metaphors? No, that's ridiculous. And you should know that. You should know that. Also, why tell the entire online world and expect people to just be content with it? Usually you don't split something you're not familiar with. Like your favorite dream SMP YouTuber. You don't know them personally. It's very- They feel that they're familiar with them. That's how parasocial relationships work. I mean, have you ever like sat down and listened to an entire recorded stream of someone who is streaming? Like you feel as if you're sitting there and they're just talking to you. That's what it feels like when you're there for the, with them in for like hours and hours. That's the effect that Twitch streams has. That, that's, that, that's the appeal of Twitch streams that it feels like they're, you're there with them. I mean, It feels familiar. I mean, but even if it didn't, like, is it your business? I mean, <laughs> like, I've seen some people who have historical figures as introjects because those historical figures have something that they don't, whether it's artistic ability, strength. Do not interact if you're blank, blank, blank. Do not interact if you're mentally stable. <laughs> you know why they say that? They say. They say, that, they say that because stuff like this happens. If you don't have DAD, it's easy to assume that you're not going to understand their struggles because, because you, when, you, when you make videos like this, it really doesn't help your case. Oh, if you're mentally stable, don't interact if you're mental. That's not what it says. It's not what it says. What do you mean mentally stable? That doesn't mean anything. You're just, that's, yeah, yeah. Go, you eat that nothing burger. Typing slash talking is hard for Oliver. Arf, cool, bark, good, bark, bad, bark, confuse, bark, yes, bark. This is kind of extreme, don't you, don't you think? Yeah, I mean that, I mean that is a, a little odd, but like, that's a screenshot from, from a, a private Discord conversation. where did you get that? What is that from? What? Who's that from? What? Uh, what? From what we know, that that could just be a just be a big server full of a bunch of dogs, and that's just how they communicate. We don't know. Where the hell did you get that? What is that? It might not even be a, si a system thing. What are you talking about? That could be a, like an other kin thing. I don't know anything about that. What the, what is this? <coughs> that was a switch. You you spin. You you willingly will just will another alter into existence by performing a fucking JoJo move? You just, you know, s state switch. I did a spin, I did a- I'm pretty certain switches are a lot less voluntary and a lot more subtle. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, well I'm not gonna say that switches do always take the f Weird dog outside. I'm not gonna say that switches always do take the form of like a, a, a cute little spin. Um, however, Remember earlier when I said that sometimes systems will play up their symptoms on camera for the sake of people actually believing them. Now, sometimes this can be misguided attempts, such as doing a, a little spin, right? Um, I'm not going to say that the spin is what an actual switch looks like. I have yet to see that being the case, other than, I suppose, in that video. Very interesting. Um, However, it could be, so, okay. So when a switch is going to happen, there are some times where it's very quick, it's instantaneous, and you don't know it's going to happen, and it is involuntary, sometimes. Sometimes it's slow, it can take upwards of uh, a, a few hours in a day, you know, you can, there can be uh, long spans of time where you feel just disconnected from reality and your vision is blurry, you know, um, which can, you know, be a, a very uncomfortable. However, there are some times where maybe like you can feel a switch coming on and you can tell that it's going to be quick. And so I'm guessing that, and I'm, I'm guessing to give them the benefit of the doubt, obviously, that 
that's what was going on and they were you know playing it up a little bit uh by adding a you know a little, a little spin for the sake of um i don't know a, a, a few different things maybe to, to play it up for so that people actually believe them you know because that's why a lot of people like do more visible things when they record their switches which i wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that unless um maybe you're an adult because as in like you know physically an adult because otherwise it might not be a good decision because i mean switches are a very personal thing very intimate thing and it might not be a good idea to showcase that part of yourself online unless you have made an educated decision as an adult right to do so otherwise you know you might look back on it and feel a little bit embarrassed but that is that is absolutely not grounds to shame someone if they do decide to showcase that. I know dissociated specifically, um, uh, the one of the biggest influence, uh, one of the biggest DID centric influencers uh, within the community, um, has uploaded videos where they have a switch, which is helpful for people watching it to feel less embarrassed about their switches. However, if you're if you're a minor, um, then maybe hold off on doing that. You know, I mean, it really just is about choosing what to selectively post, but that doesn't mean that you should latch on to what they do post and take that as invitation to speculate on whether or not they actually do have uh, the disorder that they are claiming to have. It's good to give people the benefit of the doubt generally and just m maybe refrain on, on judging them for how they choose to present tends to be this fad on TikTok where people record their switches and post them online. I'm not entirely sure how they fucking managed to set this up, considering how sudden and unexpected a lot of switches occur. I can feel it coming on. Having nobody in the body is a pretty bold claim. Dissociate- Okay, well, they were using layman's terms to describe the fact that no one specific was fronting, which can't happen. If there's a slow switch, there's not always gonna be someone at the forefront immediately. Or sometimes, you know, there are multiple people in front, so many to the to the point where nothing gets done and nobody is in control of anything. That, 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 that happens. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it other than yeah, sometimes it feels like there's just straight up no one in there, you know? Yeah, and it just... And nothing, no information is like processed, nothing, you know... It, 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 it does just feel like a, an extreme state of dissociation. A transitional state between switches? It's not this fade out, fade back in type of situation. It's a altered state of consciousness. It's if we're talking about switches, sometimes it does feel like a fade out, fade in thing. Like... It does. What do you mean? I mean, like, I mean, the, I mean, the way that you're describing it really does just sound like being like a, what's the word? What's the word? Uh, just, just being a stickler for the, um, for the absolute insignificant details of it, of like how you define a switch. Cause like, if we're using just kind of loose words uh, to, to describe the feeling of switching, it can feel like a slow fade out and fade in of two different uh, states of consciousness. Like that is just sometimes how it feels. I don't, like I mean, expecting the these children who have a trauma-based disorder to be able to perfectly uh, pinpoint and describe to you how they are feeling and, 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 and what it is like in their shoes is just an, a completely unrealistic standard. And I mean, I understand that that comes with, you know, posting about your mental disorders, but like, just because a child is deciding to do that, whether it's an informed decision or not, or a good idea or not, does not give you a pass to completely like dissect, ooh, 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 let me, let me see if you really have, let me get my DID speculum. It's like, what, what are you talking about? Whoa, whoa, that's a child. What are you talking about? They're confusing this nobody in the body with this brain fuzziness that comes with association. Like who knows, but it's very unsettling that this sort of 
simple information is being propagated incorrectly like this. These people wake up in cold sweats from nightmares about their memories in the war. They are memories they wish they could forget, but they can't. When the memories of what occur triggers a fight or flight response in soldiers, and they immediately default to their training and lash out crazy, unimaginable ways. Some of these people are damaged and broken due to these memories they have endured. That's not to say PTSD can only occur in soldiers. There are lots of horrific people out there that do very horrific- Broken, alright. Bro, look, I'm not gonna say that you've never experienced trauma in your life. I'm not gonna say that. However, putting that aside, I mean, like, referring to someone with trauma as, like, damaged and broken, I, does that really seem appropriate to you? I mean, like, imagine if you had, like, a life-altering accident and somebody said, oh, yeah, <laughs> you're just damaged goods, you know? Or, like, oh, you're such a broken individual. I mean, like... Oh, that event in your past really broke you. Uh, what is it? Does that seem appropriate? Does that seem right? Do we know? I don't know. ...with complex PTSD, but with a brain that tries to not let them remember it, and the world will fall into chaos. The PTSD will trigger responses, and with such a vast history of abuse, nearly anything can cause that trigger. And then they begin to dissociate, and then begin to act in unreasonable ways, and can't stop it. It's like an alcoholic trying to cope. It's destructive. It's the separate state of mind. And each state remembers everything differently and copes in their own way. There's hosts, there's the normal side, and there's parts of the- Normal the side? Hold on, what? What do you mean, ho there's hosts, there's the normal side? That's like saying, oh, the hosts are the original. I, what are you talking about? The normal side? What do you mean, sides? No, no, no. Mm-mm. Nope. No, 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 no. Okay. So... What? Okay. So, I'm guessing this is just a bastardization of the concept of apparently normal parts, which are... just in and of itself is a little bit outdated and a little bit confusing to me, just because of how many contradictions there are in terms of how people define them but apparently normal parts is a completely different term than the normal side. What do you mean the normal side? Oh, there's my normal side and then there's my evil side. It's like, what, what are you talking about? I know that's not what he's saying, obviously, but like, what? What? What are you talking? Nobody says normal side. That's not a psychologically like recognized term. I don't know. And it's like, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking, huh? Hmm? Also, I, I don't know about, uh, like, comparing it, comparing structural dissociation to alcoholism. I feel like that's, like, vastly different things. I mean, it, it could be argued that, like, dissociation is self-destructive, but, like, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, like, that that is very up for up for discussion you know that that is its own you know philosophical matter however i mean because like in this video your framing of someone with dissociative identity disorder is oh there's this one person then a traumatic event happens and then there's a bunch of different like voices in their head that takes over sometimes but it's like it's really more than that there is no original part right uh, like some people will describe it as like, oh well, if you take a plate and you break, uh, you drop the plate on the floor and it shatters into a bunch of little pieces, you know, then which one's the original piece? There is no original piece, right? But some other people also describe it as like the branches of a tree, you know. There's sure there's one trunk, but then it sprouts out into all these different parts that are all completely uh, separate and individual and all serve their own unique purpose to form one individual plant, right? You know, th there are many different things you can use to describe it, but I don't think dissociation, splitting, whatever, on its own is self-destructive because it helps keep you safe. Alcoholism doesn't necessarily keep you safe. Oh, well, you know, it might keep you safe in that it induces dissociation, it induces amnesia, whatever. But like, in terms of surviving dangerous environments, alcoholism doesn't necessarily do that. In terms of dealing with abusers, sometimes alters will, will form because some of them are better at protecting the system. Like, what about protectors? Is forming a protector, like, self-destructive? Is forming caretakers self-destructive? I, I, I feel like a lot of this really does kind of uh, fall in line with the very old-fashioned way of approaching system healing, which is the only way for, this is in quotes, the only way for a system to really be healthy is by 
integrating all parts into one person again. But that is very much, uh, it's very controversial these days because, I mean, a lot of systems just don't want to in incredibly integrate and uh, just don't want to fully integrate with each other because sometimes it is nice to have multiple people. Sometimes it is nice to have, you know, a bunch of different uh, people to weigh in on different situations to uh, deal with situations, right? It's, uh, I don't think it's self-destructive. And I think framing that is kind of bad. I mean, I guess it doesn't help that alcoholism has a certain stigma now, doesn't it? You know, alcoholism, pe people who are alcoholics, you know, tend to uh, be a little destructive to their uh, social relationships that they have. You know, uh, if, you, if you say the word alcoholism, there's a certain, you know, uh, association of, uh, of violence and unpredictability that comes with it. Of course, not helped by the stigma behind uh, addicts, but I mean, I don't know, because people with DID don't tend to, they're, they're a lot less likely to go out of their way to hurt others, of course, unless, you know, the others that they are hurting are similar in personality type to the abuser. but. That's its own thing. Um, they're much more likely to just be afraid and be taken advantage of rather than abusing other people, which is, I, 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 I might just have bad associations with alcoholism, but I don't know. I don't know. Built on complex roots and triggers. This person isn't normal. This person hasn't grown up in a stable environment, and because of that, they can't make normal friends. And then they only find love in the places of the world where dark. Hold on, you can't make normal friends. That's just straight up not true. I got, I got my, I got my, I got my good friends. My good friends that are just the most normal people in the world. What? I'm able to socialize normally. What? I mean, like, honestly, I'd say that, like, <laughs> autism and ADHD impacts my socialization more than DID does. What are you talking about? You, have you talked to a person with DID? Even if you did, it's got so many different. <laughs> oh, they can't make normal friends. They can't make normal, you know, social connections. That's I, that's just straight up not true. You can live a normal life. You can live a successful life. I mean, it's funny because, again, people with DID who are trying to combat the stigma tend to share like, oh yeah, DID doesn't doesn't inhibit your ability to socialize with others. You can still live a happy, successful life with DID. But people who like to propagate misinformation, or I guess in this case, un accidentally propagate misinformation, tend to say like, no, no, people with DID, they struggle so much, it's so hard that they can't, they can't establish normal relationships. They can't lead successful lives. I mean, just the duality in ways of approaching talking about it. It's also funny because the same people who are saying that usually aren't systems themselves. Usually, system them, like actual systems, are the ones saying like, "No, you can't. You can be successful. You can have a happy life." Yeah, which is true, by the way. Legitimately, that's true. Like, if if you if you listen to people who are systems like talking, some of them, a good lot of them, actually, are successful. I mean, I know there's this one system that's very common in uh, plural circles called the Redwoods, and like. Yeah, they're a successful system who goes out of their way to spread actual, accurate information. You know, I don't listen to this. Just, just don't. This is actually like, this is screwed up. What are you doing? <laughs> they can only make friends with people who suffer the same. They can only make friends not with true. people who would take advantage of them, and then they'll get not again, true. and then that wound is cut deeper. All because That's not, you don't need to not build stable friends. They'll dissociate, forget who they love, and then they'll have to save face and depend on this medication to stabilize them. And a lot of the medication. Time, Hold on, medication. There's no medication for DID. There's antipsychotics, which, which can help. There's anti, like antidepressants, which can help. But like, not everyone who has DID needs medication to function. And even if they did, there's nothing wrong with that. Why are you saying that? Like, oh, these people are so broken and, and damaged. It's like, you know, uh, no. What are you talking about? Hmm? Or to feel some semblance of being happy, it wants to live in ignorance. Therefore, it keeps these parts separated and decides that it wants to preserve at least some sense of sanity so that it doesn't lose all hope. This disorder is one of the darkest holes I've climbed into. It's one of the most hopeless cases of human destruction I've ever witnessed. Get out of here, get him the hell out of here! That cuts to the audience beating the shit out of him. <laughs> a lot of these people really need help. And it's really hard with people like this running around. People bastardizing the disorder. People that make normal individuals turn away and see people with the idea as gross and strange. People that make this entire thing seem fake. Maybe because sometimes they are faking it.
But in order to fake something, it needs to exist in the first place. And this disorder certainly exists. It's this monstrous collage of mental dissociation and destruction resulting into these different states of identity in a way. It's definitely- Monstrous. Dude, what the hell? Uh, wait, do you want to stigmatize it or not? Oh, it's monstrous. These people are broken. It's so dark and, and hopeless. Oh, what, what are you talking about? Have you ever talked to someone with DID? This is not how- This is not how you should be approaching the disorder, like, at all. If you want to destigmatize it, it's monstrous. What the hell are you talking about? What are you talking about? Use your head. What are you doing? Okay. So the rest of the video is pretty inoffensive. I would say it's mostly just, you know, closing thoughts. Nothing we've, we haven't heard already. Um, so, so there's a lot going on in the video. Some of it true, you know, some of it inoffensive enough. Some of it, yeah. I, I think it's also important to note that a lot of the kids who are in these situations who are doing these TikToks, don't have the monetary um, support to actually go out and seek a professional. And of course, that doesn't mean that they should be on TikTok talking about it. Like, I I'm, I'm definitely not condoning that. But, I mean, therapy isn't a fix-all for everyone. You know, like, that much That much is, 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 is true. Um, not only that, but there are many different types of therapy. There's, you know, EMDR, there's talk therapy. There's a whole lot of stuff under the sun, you know. But... That's that's kind of besides the point. What doesn't help, what doesn't encourage kids to, 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 to seek help for their things is bullying them for having the things to begin with. Which I'm not saying this video is doing. If you see someone who is, in your mind, faking a disorder, ignore it. Which, you know, it's there's, there's of course, ton, tons of flaws within the idea where it's like, oh, don't like, don't watch, you know, but... In this case, why would let's 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 use the worst interpretation possible, right? Which is what a lot of people like to grab onto. The worst interpretation is they are absolutely faking it, knowing that they're faking it, and faking it for attention. Okay, let's pretend that that is the case. Let, let's say that that is the case. Okay, then by spreading it around through cringe compilations, whatever, you are giving them attention. Okay. And that is the least charitable understanding of it, okay? The most charitable understanding of it is they do in fact have DID and they, they are expressing themselves genuinely and then people are still putting them in cringe compilations because they're, I mean, they're faking it. I mean, look at how they act. But it's like, I mean, some of these kids, that is how people, that, that is how DID like feels and is, I mean, like, not all of it. Like, I'm not going to say, like, oh, yeah, whenever I switch, it's like a, a funny little dance and it's like a, a spin. Whoa. No, it's not like that. But just, like, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Come on. Some of it, some of these videos that you're sharing, they're really not, like, that offensive. They're, they're pretty, they seem pretty genuine. I mean, like, I, I mean, we're seeing the same things. Some of them, like, like where, where a person's eyes are, like, fluttering as they're shifting. Why are you offended by that? First first off, you're not a system. I don't know why you're offended by that. And second off, even if you were a system, I mean, I feel like you would under, you would be able to relate to that a little bit more, you know? Because I mean, like, yeah, there are some switches that would go completely unnoticed, such as having your eyes flutter, being taken aback a little bit. I mean, like like subtle, subtle things. And, you know, sometimes switches are a little, uh, like, there is just so much of it. There's there's so much. There's so much. There's so much. Listen. Spockter, if you're watching, which I don't know if you are, because I'm a little guy. I'm a little guy, you know. I, I feel like maybe, maybe you should make a, a different video that's like, hey, guess what? I was actually kind of spreading some misinformation and propagating some myths about DID. Um, and disassociative disorders in general, by the way, it, it isn't exclusively DID that you're propagating misinfo about. It's also OSDD1B, OSDD1A, um, which are separate dissociative disorders, which if you want to learn about those, uh, do some research on your own. There's a whole lot of stuff out there. Trust me, the world of dissociative disorders is, uh, there, there's so much to it. Right? But there's also even more to it that is yet to be discovered. Just because for the longest time, people have been viewing it as like, oh, there's like, there's like demons in you. Oh, watch out, there, there's creatures and beasts and demons. It's like, okay, no, um, no, 
but they didn't know that, and now they do. I mean, I'm not saying it's like within the last year that people have learned about it. However, it has been gaining a lot more mainstream notoriety, which honestly, that's a good thing. Like, it's a good thing. Like before, before the only way that the, the only thing that people knew DID from was from movies like Split, where it's like, oh, there's people with DID out there, and they're going to kill you, and they have beasts in them that will that come out and then kill you. It's like, okay. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's true. I think you're lying, and they are. They are. Um, sure, I got some things accurate, but I'll be real with you. I'd much rather people make DID out to be cringe than people make DID out to be, like, evil. No police officer is going to shoot you because you're cringe. <laughs> that's a lie. That's actually a lie. Um, but, you know, um, <laughs> still... Saying that these people are like broken and hopeless. That's that's not true. That's just straight up not true And I hate the fact that you made it out to be true and if you look through the comments People believe you people are like yeah true. I've met people with DID. Let me tell you hopeless <laughs> It's like okay. Well Maybe with that attitude. I mean <laughs> Like I've, I've seen people with with the disorder that are that are like a genius turbo geniuses okay they got a ton of stuff going on right there you know the, like you have no idea the amount of people like in the real world who are successful and have did genuinely like yeah it's hard yeah you have to work harder i mean same as same is true with like adhd with autism you know all sorts of neurodivergence schizophrenia like you don't know if somebody has these things right you could be you, well, what's the thing that people say about transgender people oh yeah you know you 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 could shake hands with a transgender person every month and you wouldn't even know because yeah sometimes you don't know sometimes they're you sometimes they're me sometimes they're your anesthesiologist i don't know they're just sprinkled out into the world you know it's like you don't know you don't know you will not know and there's no way for you to know okay it's a dog I don't get it, and I mean I don't get it. It's not I don't get it, I don't agree. I don't get it! Sparta, if you're watching this, maybe maybe make a statement or something. I'm, I'm begging you, because the amount of damage that this probably caused is like... Because you got, you got a big platform. You got a big guy platform, you know? And there are a bunch of people who are like, yeah, thank you so much for covering this. It's like people are like agreeing with you, like, yeah, you know. Some people are going to see someone with like fictional introjects. And they're gonna think this person's obviously faking you can tell because they have an interject of a fictional character it's like but no that's not a thing that no what no that's not no it's a myth that f that f fictional introjects fictives whatever are like uh, signs of faking no why are you propagating that why are you sharing that why are you sharing that pal buddy friend listen to me maybe make like a video like hey guys I was I was just kind of wrong about it. I don't know. There were some things I got wrong. Like you could even you could even take the the, the stance that some people do, where it's like, you know, a majority of what I said was right. <laughs> like a majority of it was correct. But I did get some things wrong. Like for instance, fictives are real and are very common with a lot of people, especially people who have comorbid autism diagnosis. You know, because like. Yeah, no, that was just straight up wrong. <laughs> it's just straight up wrong to say like, oh, it's rare, it barely ever happens. No, what are you talking about? Hey, what are you talking about? I don't know, think about it. There are a few things you got just completely, just bonanas, just absolutely inaccurate, uh, that just really pisses me off, <laughs> just pisses me off to think about the, the fact that some people are gonna believe the things that you said in this video. Um, I don't know, cause like, Listen, if I talk to someone and they say like, yeah, I saw that Spockta video where he's like, yeah, and he talks about all that stuff, then, and if they don't know that I'm a system, I'm probably not going to tell them. Like, it would probably make me a little bit scared to, to actually tell them about it because, I mean, I don't want to be like, I, I don't want my entire me mental health history to be completely dissected in order to know whether or not I'm faking. Oh, ooh. It's such a horrible thing when somebody is faking. Oh, uh, I don't like this. I don't like this. And if you like it, tell me about it in the comments. Um, 
Yeah, I know. I'm well. I'm glad I filmed this and made this video, because otherwise it would eat me up. You know, sometimes I wake up in a cold sweat, like, oh my god, remember that Spockter video? <laughs> That's an exaggeration. However, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Maybe, uh, maybe leave this one in the uh, in the oven for a little bit, for a little for a little while to think about it. We'll put this one in the maybe pile. like okay so you're hearing voices okay so you have ulcers you're completely nuts and that is so damaging to us in our community because when somebody tells you you're faking when somebody tells you that you're crazy or that you're making it up or whatever that's not just invalidating you and your disorder it also invalidates why you have this disorder so you're not just telling somebody no you don't have DID you're telling people that trauma that happened to you that potential abuse in childhood? Not real. You're making it up. Can you imagine how devastating that is? For somebody to look you in the eyes as you're expressing this very vulnerable part of yourself, something that has happened to you because somebody did things to a child that nobody should do? And somebody looks at you and says, You're nuts not real. You're making it up. Can you imagine that? <laughs>